welcome back to another episode of Sacred Wild Man. My name is Roy, and today this is actually a very impromptu video. I was feeling quite uh, a lot of emotion stirring, so I just decided I'm going to turn the camera on and just record. Usually I like to write things out, plan an actual sort of outline, but trying to go more spontaneous with this one. So what inspired this video is um, this morning I was watching a clip from the movie Any Given Sunday. And there's this very, I guess, famous speech in cinema given by Al Pacino in this movie. And the first time I saw it, I was in college. And after I watched it, I think I just blazed through studying for some finals. So it gave me some helpful energy to get through the just mundane studying for finals. But uh, I watched it again this morning, and once again, I found myself getting teary-eyed. So my eyes watered, and then something was going on in my chest, this heat or vibrating feeling. And it hit home for me this longing and desire to be in community with other men, to have some sense of a shared mission or purpose and everybody is in, right? Everybody's putting their hands in and saying, yeah, this is what I'm here for, this is what I'm about. And it just reminds me of, I mean, a lot of the work that I do around men's work, men's issues. Just realizing that men don't really do that anymore. Sure, you have your sports, right? Football, basketball, etc., which is all fine and good. And, you know, where, where does that go in the long term? It doesn't necessarily have to, right? Sometimes you just play or do things for competition for the sake of it. But I'm aware within myself there's this part of me that wants to aim for something more. There's something else out here on the, I guess, topic of purpose and mission that feels bigger than just myself. But that potential is dwelling and vibrating within me. I, I can't just ignore it, right? It's, it's not something where if I were on my deathbed today, I would just be like, oh, you know, guess I didn't do it, you know, too bad. Maybe, you know, I'll try another time. It would be something that, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't even allow myself to die. I said, no, I'm not done here. Like this, there's something about this flame that is still burning. And this hits home on this balance between solitude, being a lone figure, being alone, and then also being part of a group or being part of a pack. And it feels like there's a delicate balance between the two. Like with the traditions in the past of male initiation, these rites of passage that the boys are taken through by the men of the village, there's something very primal about that that lives within i believe our very dna and within our bones and it's probably why so many men when they watch something like al pacino's speech they feel something stirring within them or if they watch the haka which is performed by the maori warriors they also find themselves tearing up or just something within them is awakening and it's as if these collective um, groups of men just brings us back somewhere. Like maybe it brings us back to memories of past lifetimes or what have you of being gathered around a fire, dancing around a fire. There's something that brings men together, again, on this feeling of mission, purpose, and also togetherness. That you can look around to your side and it's like, he's got my back, I got his back, He's got my back and I got his back. And I think that's something that many men are longing for these days, but don't have. We're just solo satellites. And at the same time, with that dynamic of men being more lost, more depressed than they have ever been, nobody really seems to want to move. Um, there are men out there doing this. Like, I don't want to deny that. I think there actually is uh, what Will Spencer calls the renaissance of men and he hosts a podcast called the renaissance of men 
So I believe this work is happening out there, that there are men's groups, that there are people leading men through initiations and rites of passage. It's as if we're getting back to our roots, getting back to something primal within our DNA. But something I'm encountering a lot just in my own personal life, uh, with whether it's friends around me or just clients that I work with, is that there is a high level of ambivalence and sometimes apathy. You know, just watching some of these men's posture or how they speak, it's very shriveled and it's just caved in. It's like, oh, you know, I don't know. There's, there's no more purpose anymore. There's no more um, penetrative power, right? There, there is no vitality within their balls and their penis anymore, right? They, they have what some have termed floppy cock. Right? So there's no vitality there. There's no edge. It's just, you know, uh, whatever. I guess maybe I'll watch some movies, play some video games, have a beer and some pizza. And that's the extent of life. And I know that those men don't feel fulfilled, but it's that pain of unfulfilled feeling that they try to drown out with these other activities that are kind of like a depressive, numbing blanket because the pain feels too much to face. And so when I look around myself and I feel that level of isolation, right, feeling this flame burning within myself, but looking around myself, not too many other men are there who are like, you know what, that same flame burns in me. Let's get together, let's do something, let's create something. If not just simple activity of let's spar and wrestle, that's not really there. And so in these moments, there's an attitude within myself of what the fuck is wrong with these men? Why won't they sack it up? Why won't they get a spine and actually do something with their life? Why don't, why don't they actually collaborate with other men around them? And I think that can fall into the trap of cynicism and also projecting my own frustrations out onto these other men, thinking that they are somehow responsible for my ability to feel fulfilled or happy in my own life. And I don't think that's true. I think, uh, if anything, the harder question for me to face is, okay, Roy, in what ways are you not sacking it up? Are you not having your own spine and going out to do something. Because to be honest, I am aware of that fear within myself of, well, yeah, I got this vision, I got this thing, but man, it just feels scary to go out and do this, whether it's investing a lot of money in something or just putting it out there. So that's my own personal piece where I, I gotta take responsibility for that. And then I came also to the realization that well, if there aren't other men around me physically who share the same vision or feel this burning passion of mission and purpose, what's keeping me from reaching out to the men who are? And so that actually provides a more productive channel of uh, this energy that I'm feeling. And again, this is where that resistance or fear comes up where I notice myself thinking, Shoot, well, if I reach out to them, um, you know, they might ask, well, before we even work together, what have you done, right? Or, all right, you wanna work and collaborate and help out? Here's what I need you to do. And they'll be like, oh, you know, uh, I don't know if I can commit to that. So in the same way, the, the complaints and frustrations, frustrations that I have with other men are also the ones that I have about myself. And this is where I kind of am trying to just play around with this idea of solitude, being alone, but also being part of the group. Because I think there are times where it's more important to actually, and perhaps needed to be alone, such as right now and why I'm making this video. Because just from that simple exercise, you know, spontaneously watching that speech by Al Pacino brought me to this point, realizing that I do long for and I wish I had this kind of group, this man tribe, and that's not the current reality. And so what choice do I want to make? You know, I can reach out to other men who are already doing this work, 
get involved, help out if that opportunity is there. Or the other one is um, maybe there's also a necessary incubation period to be alone, even just a little bit longer, being alone to feel more of that frustration that I can then channel into something creative, something productive. Because if I don't stay there to feel it long enough, you know, I might not have that creative potential. And this is where I think about the benefits of being alone and two people who stand out to me. One just being David Goggins, ex-Navy SEAL, who just gets after it every day. And for some people that really just, you know, his attitude or his philosophy really you know, doesn't uh, align with them. They, you know, perhaps feel a little bit jaded or maybe even disgusted with his attitude. But that aside, you know, whether you believe that's right or wrong, what have you, there's something admirable and respectable about David Goggins, who he is and what he's about. Because it doesn't matter what the people around him think or what they're doing, he's still going to go after what he wants to go after. And he's the only person that I know on Instagram who has, I think, upwards of 3 million followers and follows zero people. So truly, this is a man who is blazing his own path and inspiring a lot of other people to either follow or do something with their own lives. Now, the other figure is Muhammad Ali, who has this quote attributed to him of, you know, people like to run in packs because they're afraid to be alone. And he says, I'm afraid to run in packs because, uh, I forgot exactly how he worded it, but there's this aspect of being afraid to be swallowed within the pack, you know, just to avoid aloneness, whereas he prefers to run alone because he's afraid of being consumed by the pack, right? There can be that group think or mob mentality that we all just need to agree on the same things and be on the same page. Well, now, if that were the case, right, with the state of men here in the West, then we would all just, you know, kick our feet up on an ottoman, drink some beer, eat some pizza, watch TV, and waste our lives away. And that's not a reality. That's not an existence that I'm satisfied with. And so this is that tension of being alone. You know, what other work what further work do I have to do on myself when I'm alone that I would not otherwise need to do if I were just happy in a group? And then the other side of balancing that is, well, when am I too far into aloneness where I get tunnel vision, where I'm not receptive to feedback around me, where I'm not paying attention to the people in my life who I care about or care about me, in the ways in which I impact them. So that's a dilemma, this balance that I don't have answer for, and I don't think there necessarily is the answer. I think it's something like sailing, where we're constantly adjusting our rudder uh, based on which direction the wind is blowing. And so it's never a, yeah, you just do this one action and it's, it's smooth sailing from here. You constantly have to adjust. So that's kind of my mental, emotional dump for today. I wanted to get this out there just to express and then look back on it later and also share my own process in case this might be of inspiration to any other men who are in a similar place. Thanks for watching.